Planning Commission to order, please. Just a quick note, the uh, last item on the agenda has been postponed. So we won't be hearing about the Sugar House Business District Design Standards. So if anybody came for that, you can leave now if you want. <laughs> um, just a couple of notes. Housekeeping wise, um, if you're an applicant, we'll invite you up to speak. Be sure to say your name for the record. And you'll have 10 minutes to speak. And if you, when we open the public hearing and you're just going to be a member of the public speaking, then you'll have two minutes. Again, state your name for the record. And let's try to be courteous of other people who are speaking. No <laughs> comments from the audience, please. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, approval of the minutes is first. Any discussion on the minutes? Okay, somebody make a motion to, I'll move to approve. approve them. I'll move to Clark? approve. Clark, okay. I'll second. Weston seconds. Brenda. Yes. Amy. Oh, Andreas, I'm sorry, you both start with A. <laughs> I'll abstain, I wasn't here. Okay. Amy. Yes. <clears throat> Carolyn. I agree. Sarah. Yes. Weston. Yes. Clark. Yes. And Matt. Yes. Thank you. The minutes are approved. The chair has nothing to report. Vice chair? Nothing to report. Thank you. And the director's seat. You sure? <laughs> it's your first time. Welcome. Okay, we'll try to be nice to you, okay? All right, we'll move on to the first, the first item on the agenda is a plan development and preliminary subdivision at 873 South, 1500 West. Doug. Hi, this is a plan development and a subdivision by, initiated by Witten Knopp. Um, it's on the corner of 9th South and 15th West. Uh, 15th West um, is a dead end street at Den's Ends, about a block south of this side into the old railroad line. Indiana is the next street to the north, is sort of the major east west street through the west side. Um, they've applied basically for a lot split. Um, and here's a closer uh, photo provided by the applicant. As you can see, the, the center lot there is about twice the size of most of the other lots in the neighborhood. What are they, what they're asking for is to divide it so that they can leave the existing home, which was built in 1893 on one lot, and then build a new home on the lot, which is now just lawn space on the corner of uh, 1500 West and 9th South. Um, I put this up there because it gives an example um, of just how much bigger this lot is than, than the other in the neighborhood. And you can also see from this one. This would just be a simple over-the-counter item. The reason you are seeing it is because uh, new lots in the R15000 zone are required to have 50 feet of frontage on a deeded street. Um, 1500 West at this point, their frontage that they have is 97 feet. And there's, even though I took calculus in college, I can't divide that in half and get 50 twice. So um, that is the only thing they're asking to modify. The minimum lot size in this zone is 5,000 square feet. There is a maximum light so lot size of 7,500 square feet. That maximum is a soft upper end because things larger can, can be approved. The reason we have a maximum is so that in part to keep the scale of homes similar in a neighborhood so that we don't have one big lot and one super house that's completely out of scale with the rest of the neighborhood. This lot is just under 15,000 square feet. So if they had 200 more square feet, they could have divided into three lots in terms of just raw uh, square footage. They're proposing to draw, uh, again, uh, have it. Um, it won't 
be perfectly in half because there is an existing home on the site. And in order to keep that home with normal setback requirements, side yard and that, it results in a slightly larger than 50 foot frontage for the existing home and I think 44 and, and three inches frontage for the new lot um, on the corner. So um, we took, I sent this community council, both community councils, because it's near the border. Neither of them um, decided to hear it. Um, I also did a mailing to all the adjacent property owners and really have had basically no feedback whatsoever. So the bottom line is staff has recommended approval because we think in the long run having an extra home on this lot provides infill housing. It's at the scale similar to the neighborhood. The new lot is actually more in keeping with the neighborhood than the existing lot is. So. Any questions for Doug? So Doug, I have a question. Can you explain what's gone on with that alley? Um, it's a paper alley. I don't know the details. It's just, it it's, exists on paper, um, but it's not improved in any way, shape, or form. It's sort of got trees and other things o over it. I initially had a conversation of, you know, can that be used? The reality is the um, garage to the existing home already has its own driveway that doesn't use the alley. and. Uh, yeah, no, it can't be used. I'm wondering, what is the city's policy on these type of things? If this is a public right-of-way, but clearly unusable, does the city go through and try to vacate these or change ownership? <clears throat> well, um, the answer is complicated, but <clears throat> the city does have a policy that allows you to vacate alleys. Um, it goes to the Planning Commission, uh, to the City Council. Um, one of those policies would be that it basically doesn't exist. Um, however, they also do not want to vacate any alleys until they have a more clear and defined policy regarding alleys. So there's some that have been sitting in the council office for like eight or nine years waiting to be reviewed. Wow. So I, I don't know. So the city doesn't necessarily right initiate reviews of... No. Because like, this one is clearly unusable. Right, but we would wait for an applicant to come okay. in to do that. That was just a side note to kind of educate me on that. Thank you. Anyone else? Is your applicant here? We are. Okay, why don't you come up, state your name for the record, and tell us a little bit about your project. Well, my name is Sam Knopp. That's my brother, Witten Knopp. He is the applicant. Okay. Um, but I've done all of the paperwork for him. Sit down. It's oh, okay. Oh, sure. Happily. <laughs> Settle in. Um, yeah, so we bought the house a couple years ago. The house is in very bad shape. We've halfway remodeled it. We'll take the funds from the new house, spent buying the lot to reside it and finish fixing it up. It's a cool old house. Um, the alley is totally full of three different garages, and there's a fence right down the middle of it, so it is pretty well toast and... Yeah, we'll build a similar style house, two stories, about the same height, but, you know, 800 square foot footprint. So when we went out there and looked, everybody wanted to keep the tree on 9th or 15th On 15th, West. yes, yeah. me too. That's a special tree. Okay. Yeah, it's very cool. So we're taking down a tree on whatever that is. 9th South. Or Ninth yeah. South. Yeah. And, uh, and we actually just had the city plant three more on the park strip, so they're up and growing and yeah. Okay. Good. Um, any questions for the applicant? No? Okay. Thank you. Cool. Step back. Thank you. Uh, we'll open the public hearing on this item. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak on this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, I'll bring it back up to the commission. Do we need Doug or... The applicant back. I'd like to make a motion. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Based on the information in the staff report, the information presented, and the input received during the public hearing, I move that the Planning Commission approve petition PLN PCM 2019-00109, a residential plan development to construct two single-family detached homes with modifications to zoning ordinance regulations regarding minimum street frontage. 
Are there two? I'll second. Amy will second. There's a two. There's, there's a second. two parts there are two to motions. that. There's two parts to it. So there's there's a, there's a second application. We could just deal with this one and then do a second. Oh, motion. okay. We'll just do a second motion. Okay. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, uh, we'll take a vote. Brenda? Yes. <clears throat> Andres? Yay. Amy? Yes. Carolyn? Agree. Sarah? Yes. Weston? Yes. Clark? Yes. And Matt? Yes. Okay, I need a motion for the second part of this one. I don't see that, I don't see that motion. Is, is it not on the motion sheet? Next page down. I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, Thank you. Regarding oh, PLN PCN 2019-00110 for the subdivision, uh, based on the information in the staff report, the information presented and the input received during public hearing, I move that Planning Commission approve petition 20, PLN PCN 2019-00110, a request to create two individual lots for the two associated single-family detached homes. And a second. I'll second. Kristen, thank you. Any discussion? Okay. Matt. Yes. Clark. Yes. Weston. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Carolyn. My bad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Amy. Yes. Andres. I'll say yes. Brenda. Yes. Okay, they both the motions pass. Thank you. Good luck. Now we'll move on to the Masonic Temple Master Plan and Zoning Map Amendments. Lex. Good evening. Thank you. Um, this is a request uh, for a uh, amendment to the central community master plan as well as a amendment to the zoning map for the property uh, portion of the property um, it's the masonic temple located at 650 east south temple um, the proposal is to the, amend the master plan a, a future land use map from institutional to residential office mixed use and to amend the Salt Lake City zoning map from institutional to residential office. Um, what we would like for you to do tonight, we request that the Planning Commission hold a public hearing to consider the requests and make a recommendation to the City Council who has final decision making authority in these matters. This is a um, vicinity map showing the property as it currently exists. It's outlined in red. Um, and then this is a map showing uh, the area that the uh, applicant is proposing to uh, amend. So on the um, left-hand side, you have the proposed rezone area. And then on the right-hand side, should it be rezoned, it would be that purple RO. That's just to illustrate what portion of that property would be um, amended. I just want to bring up a couple points. I'm not going to talk real long. Um, in your staff report on page six, I have made a list of uses that are allowed in the RO zone. Um, a lot of those uses have an asterisk next to them. Those, that asterisk is to indicate that those uses are also allowed in the institutional zone. And the point I want to make here with that illustration is that the major difference between the institutional zone and the residential office zone in terms of land uses is the fact that institutional zone only allows limited dwelling uses. In fact, it's only assisted living. Um, should this property be rezoned, it would allow for a variety of different type of dwelling uses. It would also um, accommodate um, some limited commercial, some office, uh, more of a mixed use type nature. The second point I'd like to make is in terms of um, some of the zoning ordinance standards for the, the two zones. Um, in the institutional zone, in terms of maximum building height, um, what is allowed now is the, um, 35 feet. So that portion of the property that is zoned um, institutional, somebody could potentially build something up to 35 feet. Um, they could go through a process to, to, to get more height, but 
um, you know, just base height is 35 feet. In the RO, um, the, the building height would be 60 feet. And if you'll notice on this map, the, the, the properties that front on 600 East are already zoned RO. And the Masonic Temple owns four parcels that front on 600 East adjacent to the property that they are requesting to rezone. Um, also in terms of uh, yard requirements, the yard requirements in the institutional and the RO zone are very similar. They they vary maximum of five feet. So um, in terms of development, they're very similar. Um, it's important to note that this property is in the South Temple um, Local Historic District. The Historic Landmark Commission would have um, decision-making authority um, in reviewing any sort of new construction on the property. Um, the Planning Commission may see this if there's a planned development aspect to it. We don't know. We, we don't have an actual proposal at this point to, to make that prediction, but any sort of new construction would have to go before the Landmark Commission for approval. Um, the Landmark Commission heard this proposal on May 2nd. Um, they had a very favorable reaction to what was being requested. Um, I've included the minutes from that uh, meeting in your packet for your review. Um, in terms of public contact, I've had a few phone calls. Um, most of them were just general information, wanting to know more specifically like what the proposal, um, if it included any sort of actual physical development, which at this point it doesn't. Um, I had a concern about uh, any sort of, um, if the actual temple itself was going to be modified, and that's, that's not on the table at this point either. We contacted all the community, there's three community councils that this um, property is um, subject to because of its location. We contacted community councils, we didn't get any comments from them. Um, we have provided an analysis of the pros proposal in the staff report, and you have that before you. Um, the request meets the standards for MAP amendments, um, and at this point, uh, planning staff recommends that the Planning Commission forward a posit positive recommendation regarding the proposed amendments onto the City Council for consideration. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to entertain those for you. So I just have a quick question. What is your response to the public comment about the historic garage or, now I can't remember exactly what structure that was. Well, it it is an old structure. It was actually, from what I can tell from Sanborn maps, it was a, um, a garage that was for a home that fronted on the 600 South um, streetscape. Um, it is not actually part of any city survey. So we can't say that it is a contributing structure, although I, if, I think if it was surveyed, it would probably be a contributing structure. Um, so if there is any sort of alteration or movement of that, the, the Landmark Commission would be involved. Thanks. Any other questions? Is your applicant here? I think Matt. Finally, um, Question. It might not even be for this at this time, but it, it seems like an opportunity here to just continue to break up our blocks with like mid block crossings and pathways and stuff. Uh, just because you'd have that large parking lot that goes the whole way that's almost exactly at the center. Does that would that conversation come up in a future development conversation or? Um, it could be, but I don't know that that's required in right. either one of those zones. Okay. All right. Thanks. I mean, it, it might be an amenity that. A developer would want to provide anyway, but I don't know that we have the the means to enforce that for those zones. Okay. All right. Thanks. Anyone else questions for Lex? Thank you. And yes, the applicant is here. Okay. <laughs> so say your name for the record, and you have ten minutes. Thank you. Bryce Baker, uh, co-founder of DB Urban Communities. Uh, as you can hear, there's been a lot of work, and so we appreciate Lex and 
all of the process that has gone on. We've had community council open house here. We had uh, landmarks earlier this month. We appreciate your time as you hear this. Uh, we were engaged by the Masonic Temple to look at uh, what options there are for long-term economic viability for the, the temple itself. They take a, they take a great uh, pride in maintaining the structure and having a stewardship over the building. And so uh, a lot of their income comes in from endowments. And so we want to make sure that there's opportunities for additional I income that comes through. As we looked at the land use, the adjacent uses are, are RO. Uh, so surrounding the property, it's, it's RO zone. Predominant zone along South Temple is RO. The zoning on both sides of 600 East at this point is RO. And so we looked through what is a permitted use within, the, within that zone and there wasn't anything that we saw that would preclude uh, future development that would allow for the viability. There's, there's not an interest at this point to expand the campus, which is the intent of the institutional zone. And so um, usually it's used for multi-building campuses and, and additional facilities within a particular use. So at this point, uh, that's not the desire going forward. And so putting the parking lot into a, a usable function uh, required some of the, the boundary that we're looking at. Um, I know at Landmarks Commission, they asked why we weren't doing the entire site, and I'm glad that Lex brought up the fact that there is concern about whether or not the structure itself is being modified, uh, which is not the case or the intent of this, uh, of this uh, proposal. So we are really looking at cleaning up the west side of the parking lot. Uh, there is a, uh, a need for parking for ongoing operations at the lodge at, at uh, certain times throughout the year. And, and so the parking lot that remains was quantified based on the number of stalls that are required. And so uh, we really have tried to, to <coughs> maximize the amount of land that could go into a development uh, at this point. The zone uh, in meeting with uh, zoning and zone administrator uh, to get some interpretation, the reason why the zone has a tail is, and I can't really, oh, I can't highlight, great. So the reason why the tail out to South Temple uh, is uh, within the zone, we're not allowed to have ingress, egress that would serve another zone. I believe they refer to that as the shopping center clause where you can't have a commercially zoned and have uh, an ingress, egress point through a residential neighborhood. The same condition exists here with institution, even though most of the uses are permitted within both of the zones. Um, it's a different zone that's being accessed. The other issue that we have, uh, as we have uh, discussed other developments within the city with Salt Lake Fire, is that with the beautiful street lines, uh, streetscape on 600 East and the on-street parking, uh, we would not be able to meet a fire, an aerial fire apparatus access uh, for the fire department if we were to use 600 East as the, as the point of connection. Uh, there's just too far from the setbacks from the property line and out into the street. And can so, you, sorry, can you still use 600 East as a second entrance, but just not your primary one to meet code? So we we can use sec, uh, 600 East as primary entrance into the development. All we all we want. What we can't use is for their fire truck uh, to right. be able to reach the. So top. would you still maintain though 600 East as as a way to get in and out? But the South Temple would be your primary. Well, I mean, are you just yeah, still cer have those certainly two? 600 East would be frontage for the building or the development uh, as we look at it. What the South Temple allows is for a mid block point for the fire truck to come in right. and then I was potentially be able to reach. I was curious if you were still going to keep the 600 East access regardless. Yes. Okay, that's what I was, I was curious about. Thanks. Good question. And so, again, as we looked at um, what is permitted, what is, what is uh, allowed within the use, uh, the adjacent uses to make sure that it was compatible, uh, we are now uh, 
squaring off, I guess, the RO zone on that quadrant of the block. And so we're surrounded by ourselves, which is an institutional use, and then the RO to the north and to the south of us, and it's RO directly across the street to the west of us. And so we felt that was the appropriate zone uh, as opposed to trying to spot zone something else uh, and shoehorn it into the block. It, it made more sense this way. What it also allows is, as we met with landmarks, uh, because the three parcels out on 600 East are already RO, um, there's already the, the granted height uh, within that, those zones. We thought it was probably more appropriate given the residential nature of 600 East to allow for density to be shifted further in block than out on the street. And so to, to try to maintain some sort of pedestrian scale along 600 East. And so, uh, Squaring up the RO zone allows us that opportunity as well. So with that, I am again grateful for you to be here tonight. Uh, we look forward, uh, hopefully, for a positive recommendation so this can move to the City Council. I'm available to answer any questions. Questions for the applicant? You're, they're not very curious tonight, so <laughs> you're lucky. There we go. We got great applications tonight. You can step back. Thank you. Uh, we will open the public hearing on this item. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak on this? Okay, would you come forward, state your name for the record into the microphone, and you'll have two minutes. Okay. Rosa Renault. My husband and I own the two houses on 6 East two historic homes, beautiful homes, which is right next to that development that he's applying. So I kind of want to know what, I want to know what we are, what's he going to do? Because it's well, affecting at, us. At this point, we don't, we don't have an application for a development. It's just okay. for his own change. Changing. So until they come together with their plan, mm -hmm. they can't tell you what they're doing. Oh, okay. All right. Just so, curious. We, yeah, well, and stay tuned because you'll have another opportunity. Great, thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak on this? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, I'll bring it back up to the commission. Does anybody need the applicant or Lex to come back up? So, Lex, I'm just going to ask um, for the benefit of our last um, question. So when the proposal comes forward, and let's just say it only goes to the Landmark Commission, um, they still will have, do they get the same type of notification that um, you do for like the Planning Commission? Yeah. So and the I neighbors would be notified? Mm -hmm. I was going to grab them before they leave okay. and explain that process, but you're absolutely right. They, if they got no, did you receive public notification in the mail for this? Yeah. They would receive notification by mail for any sort of new construction that the, that the Landmark Commission would entertain. So, yeah, that's I just wanted to clarify that for them so they knew they would always have an opportunity to yeah. participate once the proposal actually came forward. Good point. Thanks. Anything else? Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion, if that's all right. Thank you, Clark. <coughs> on the analysis and findings listed in the staff report, testimony and the, propose, the proposal, proposal presented, I move that the Planning Commission forward a positive recommendation regarding the amendments on to the City Council as proposed, and this is for PLN PCN 2019-00230 and 00231. Thank you. A second? I'll second. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> I think she beat you, Matt. It's fine. Can I vote first? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Clark. Yes. Weston. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Carolyn. Agree. Amy. Yes. Andreas. Yay. Brenda. Yes. We'll forward the positive recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to our third item, which is the Williams Avenue ADU. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, good evening. Um, this is a request by Allie Platt 
uh, representing the property owner of the property at approximately 233 East Williams Avenue. Uh, for a conditional use approval to construct a detached accessory dwelling unit or ADU um, to the rear of the property, <clears throat> um, staff is recommending approval of the project with conditions. Um, so the project is before the commission because the proposed ADU is located in the R1 5000 single family residential district. Um, all ADU proposals in a single family zoning district require conditional use process. Uh, this process looks at the compatibility, location, configuration, and potential impacts of the request. Um, conditional uses are allowed uses if appropriate conditions can be imp imposed and mitigate the adverse impacts. Um, <clears throat> so this uh, next slide will um, just go over a little bit of the details of the ADU. Uh, the proposed ADU is approximately 432 square feet. It will have a flat roof and a height of approximately 13 feet. Uh, the primary exterior material will be a six inch tongue and groove cedar siding with birch wood decorative inlays. Uh, there, will, there will be one parking space provided for the ADU um, as well as two um, that are pro provided for the primary residence. So there will be a three parking spaces total. Um, the entrance for the ADU will be oriented towards Williams Avenue and also the rear facade of the primary residence. Um, the closest house to the proposed ADU is approximately 25 feet away. Um, to review a chart of the development regulations for the ADUs and what is allowed versus what is being proposed, you can see attachment E of the staff report. Um, these slides show um, some pictures of the primary house on the residence. Um, you can see the driveway entrance on the picture on the right. That will be the entrance that will be used to access um, the accessory dwelling unit as well as the location for all of the off-street parking. Um, transportation did approve three parking spaces in a tandem parking style on the side of the um, primary residence. Um, these pictures show some of the surrounding development um, on Williams Avenue. Um, they show both the north and south sides of the street. The top two pictures are on the north side of the street. The bottom two pictures are on the south side of the street. Um, this sh slide shows the rear yard of the property. Um, you can see a garage on there. Um, that garage will be removed in to make space for the accessory dwelling unit. Um, you can see the um, six foot tall cedar fence that is currently on the property um, that will be used um, as a means of privacy for both the accessory dwelling unit on the property as well as the surrounding um, properties. Um, to comply with the conditional, or conditional use standards that relate to the character of the site and compatibility with adjacent uses, staff is recommending a condition of approval that the existing privacy fence on the subject property along the interior side and rear yards will remain. Um, the fence can be replaced if, a or if the proposed fencing provides the same level of privacy. Um, one thing to note is that an accessory structure such as a detached garage or a shed um, could be constructed one foot away from the property line. So in looking at this proposal, it is not the accessory building itself, but because there may be increased activity on the site due to the accessory dwelling unit. Um, and that is why staff is recommending that condition to this. Um, um, next slide, we'll go over um, the public process that um, took place for this. Um, early notification was sent out to property owners um, and residents within 300 feet of the proposal, um, as well as to the um, applicable city or community councils, which in this case was the Liberty Wells and Central City Community Councils. Um, there was no um, or staff and the applicant attended a small neighborhood community meeting hosted by the Liberty Wills Community Council um, to discuss the project. There were no um, comments that were, were provided by either community councils. Um, staff also held an open house 
for this project where no um, comments were received at the open house as well. Um, no, com no public comments were received during the, any of the, uh, or during, during the public input process that were forwarded to me. Um, so staff um, finds that the project meets the standard of approval for conditional use and is recommending the commission approve the project with the um, suggested conditions. Questions for Chris? I just have a question about the parking. I guess there was no discussion when this uh, ADU policy was adopted mm -hmm. about, um, like I don't think it's that big of a deal ultimately, but like I doubt that those three tandem spots when you're talking about two households, those are, I, I doubt that they would be utilized in that way. Um, but I guess that's okay with the policy that they are tandem spots and they're gonna have to ask each other to move all the time. Sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, and that will be kind of an unfortunate side effect. But um, one thing to note that I didn't bring up is it is also within a quarter mile of a bus station. Oh, it is. Um, it's the State Street and approximately 10th South um, bus station. I can't remember the exact address, but it is within a quarter mile as well. Um, but does that eliminate the need, uh, the actual Yeah, that would eliminate the spot. need for the one spot for the accessory dwelling unit. Um, according to the ordinance, they could get relief on that. But they chose to still provide the three on street or off street parking spaces. Okay, thanks. And commissioner, just you know, um, the ADU ordinance does allow your on street parking cell if you have one to count for your required parking as well. Oh, it does. Okay. Just for the future, you're going to continue to see more ADUs. Yeah, that's why I asked the question. So thank you. But to piggyback on that, we're not. We don't see every ADU. You'll see every ADU that's in a single family residential zone. Uh, okay. So anything that's in like an RMF zone. <clears throat> They're just R1. permitted. I have to keep, I, I keep forgetting that. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I just want to make sure. So the back of the ADU will be along an alley. Is that right? Are they going to have alley access there? Um, no, there was an alley at one point, but that alley is no longer in existence. So they'll still, everybody will just come and go through the Williams Avenue side. Yes, the one point of entrance, yes. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? I'll let you step back. Is your applicant here? Uh, yes. <laughs> Bring her up. <clears throat> Him up. Sorry. State your name for the record. You have 10 minutes if you have that much to say about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my name is Dallin Jolly. Um, this is my property in Williams Avenue. I'm going to be using it in the purpose I'm actually going to be living in, in the ADU. And um, I'm just single, so I found it a really good opportunity. So I was really excited when the ADU ordinance passed because I found the opportunity I could live in a smaller space and like an ADU and then rent out my home um, for quite a bit more than I could rent the ADU out. So decided to go that route. Um, and just a few, a few small items of business about this specific ADU. Um, that we're building. I'm actually part of a, a development group where we're building these ADUs um, and doing them prefab and off-site, um, which it was a really important part of this process, which I think um, is, a, is an important part of the ADU uh, ordinance is, is that it eliminates the construction uh, that is going to happen in these residential areas. And that was a big <laughs> feedback and a lot of things is, I'm a contractor and designer and so I know I built a few ADUs personally in, in the community and it's messy and it's dirty. You have subcontractors going in for six months. And so we designed a, um, a project and this, this product specifically to be built offsite and actually be um, delivered, finished. It's only a one day install time. So it, it uh, kind of eliminates the dirty, messy, noisy problem for a lot of homeowners, which which was, I think, part of the, the spirit of the law behind the, the uh, having it go through community council and planning commission is so the neighbors could understand the process there. But um, so we're, we're, I'm excited about having this ADU on my property and I think it's gonna add a lot of uh, value to it and to also me as, as a homeowner. And so um, we're, uh, we're excited to move forward, so. Any other questions about? Question, questions for the applicant? Just a comment, really. I just want to congratulate you on your entrepreneurship. That's quite commendable, especially with ADUs becoming more and more. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. So Famous. how do they install it? Do you need a crane? Crane. Yeah. Okay. So they're 100% they're built prefab off-site, and so they come finished. Um, the only work that happens on-site is just the utility poles. So it'd be the uh, water sewer power that gets pulled up. There's no gas in the unit. It's all electric, heated, and run. Um, and so those all get stubbed in. Uh, after the 
permit had been issued, they stub it in. And the beauty is that um, we can submit for a manufacturer order you know, some after the permit gets issued and it's only about eight weeks to build the, the actual unit and it, it ships down the road and you crane it in and, and finish it. So what kind of a foundation does it have? What's that? What kind of a foundation does it have? So it's, it's built on um, a continuous steel I-beam base, this actual structure is, and um, then it'll be um, anchored in as a footing foundation that'll be a helical screw pile. So I don't know if you've seen those concrete screw piles or metal screw piles that go down. Instead of having continuous footing and foundation, um, they're just those six pillar points. It's a lot, a lot less evasive and a lot less money. Um, and it can do that because of the continuous steel I-beam base that the unit is actually built on. It can l carry those load spans. Okay. Interesting. So, and there's actually, uh, so the, the unit that, that is proposed is, is we have one on display at City Creek Mall. So if you guys have a chance to go and walk through there, we're, we have a, a collaboration with City Creek Mall right now. And that's one of the, it was a prototype unit that we had built um, for the project. So if you're curious of what's actually going to go in the backyard, it'll look just like that. So. Okay. Any other questions? Will, will you have air conditioning? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, it'll have heating and, and cooling on a, it's called a ductless mini split. It's like a, a condenser that goes on the back of the unit and then it has just two heads that they're, they're heating and cooling all in one, but all electric. Okay, so. thank you. Any other questions? So you, uh, what's the name of the company that's doing this? It's called Modal. Modal? M-O-D-A-L, yeah, okay. livemodal.com. So if you wanna check it out. Okay, no questions? You can step back, okay. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So I will now open the public hearing on this item. Is there anyone here who'd like to speak on this item? Come on up, sit down, state your name into the microphone for the record, and you'll have two minutes. Um, I'm Marjorie Stolhand, and I live on the east end of that block. Um, other people on the block are also concerned, as I am, about parking because it's you know, we have, a, we have mostly just single family homes on that street. Um, and the other thing I'm concerned about is that I understood that the owner has to live in the, on the property in one or the other buildings. How will they be able to monitor that? And um, if it gets sold in six months or something, does that still apply that the owner has to has to live on the property we'll we'll get staff to answer that for you <coughs> is that all that's it thank okay. you thank you is there anyone else who wants to speak on this seeing no one i will close the public hearing chris can you come back and and answer her questions Um, to answer a question regarding um, the living on the property um, and kind of what happens, um, how do they um, regulate that? So um, when you do an ADU, you do have to record what's called a deed of restriction with the property. Um, basically, um, what that's going to state is that you um, essentially are restricting your deed to adhere to the ADU standards. Um, and if you are to ever sell it, um, those standards would have to be met or the ADU would have to be removed. Is that correct? Yeah, I was just going to say the deed restriction runs with the land, so it, it's permanent and it goes with it. And if they were to violate the terms of the deed restriction or the conditional use permit, um, the planning commission or the mayor can uh, revoke the conditional use permit and then they got a real big problem on their hands. Okay. And then also, if they plan on renting um, one of the units, they do have to go through the business license division for a license to um, essentially rent a dwelling unit. Like any other yeah. rental. And parking, they've provided places, so. Um, yes, in this case, they did provide the off-street parking. Um, they could choose to use the um, parking requirement um, on the street. Yeah, the on-street yeah. parking or to um, not provide any because of that quarter mile. But in this um, case, they did or choose to provide three okay. on-street park or off-street parking spaces. Thank you. Any more questions for staff? 
Seeing none, thank you. Any discussion? Any motions? Somebody jump in there. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Um, based on the information listed in the staff report and the information presented, the input received during the public hearing of the commission approved the request for the conditional use of the accessory dwelling unit ADU at 233 East Williams Ave. Presented on the petition PLN PCM 2019-00118 with the conditions listed in the staff report. I'll second. Clark seconds. Any discussion? Okay, we'll vote. Matt. Yes. Clark. Yes. Weston. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Carolyn. Agree. Amy. Yes. Andreas. I will say yes. Brenda. Yes. Thank you. The motion passes. And I think we're done for the evening. The meeting's adjourned. <laughs>